Hi, this is Gilles, Radio Proper. And today, not much to show really, but I thought I would do a video anyways, because I haven't published for some time. But uh, I was um, considering again a VHF for uh, regional communications. And uh, there are bands that we, uh, I think we don't use enough, especially uh, in a prepping context. And that's uh, 2 meters SSB and CW and 6 meters FM. So, you know, I'm a big fan of 6 meters FM and I never managed to contact anybody. But, you know, once in a while, I mean, I have made contacts before, but very rarely. And uh, I make regular contacts on 2 meters uh, USB. But uh, in five years, I've made only two contacts on 2 meters CW, so Morse code. But today, uh, well, you'll see that, but uh, I recorded one of my contacts. Uh, I made uh, two contacts in Italy. Uh, I think uh, both of them around 150, 160 miles, maybe 170 miles, 280 kilometers, uh, just about. Surprising because uh, my antenna has uh, no gain, actually, well, not no gain, but it has less gain than a dipole. So it's a PAR loop, and uh, I finally brought it back from uh, the north and uh, from my parents' house and uh, uh, used it today uh, successfully. And uh, the contact, well, you see, I'll show you the contact, but uh, it, it was surprising that uh, actually I made it that far with an antenna, you know, 10 watts and an antenna that has, uh, that is not a beam antenna, but an omnidirectional antenna. So, so this PAR antenna for two meters has less gain than a dipole. It's omnidirectional, so it's mounted uh, horizontally. And yet, I can make a contact to about 150, 170 miles with this, with 10 watts. 10 watts and this piece of gear here. Amazing. Anyways, uh, bands that we don't use enough, in my opinion, for, uh, for prepping or for regional contacts are indeed uh, 2 meters USB uh, CW, also 70 centimeters USB CW. And someday I hope to get one of these radios try uh, a, a UHF on uh, USB and, uh, and CW and who knows I mean probably less chance even to make a contact on CW on 70 centimeters but uh, I'm sure in USB that would be possible and maybe there are quite a few people there I don't know uh, in the region but uh, 6 meters FM I'll, I'll keep trying <laughs> I know it's it's not likely to happen but uh, you know someone might be uh, watching their waterfall and uh, see my signal when they're you know chasing uh, DX on uh, uh, the lower part of the band but you know they could see maybe that someone is calling and uh, and reply who knows uh, but 6 meters FM 6 meters is a good band for regional communication what you know local also but it goes a little bit beyond 2 meters usually I'm using military radios, so they're pretty heavy, so not for portable operations, definitely. But, you know, for uh, vehicle-based uh, operations or transportable operations, you know, base camp, anything like that, they are absolutely excellent. And they are great also if you're not carrying anything else. <laughs> so you could carry a PRC-351 or PRC-350 or RF-10. Um, there are a number of uh, radios, military radios, that are really, uh, you know, I'm not going to say cheap. They used to be cheap, but not anymore. But uh, they are uh, reasonably priced and uh, can be used uh, uh, for FM on 6 meters and also uh, for people who can on 4 meters. And of course, if there was no uh, regulations or no more uh, rule of law, uh, you could use them from generally 30 to 76 megahertz. So that would be, of course, a large uh, frequency uh, bandwidth. And uh, who knows, that's, I don't know. I, I kind of like them because they're so rugged. But of course, it's the weight is definitely a problem. And uh, recharging, uh, you know, 28 volt batteries, uh, it's not easy. Uh, I'm going to build a special charger from, from 12 volts uh, soon. And I'll make a video about that. But uh, the battery management is not uh, very easy for military radios. Of course, some of these radios use uh, lower voltage, like the RF-10 uses 6 volts. And the uh, PRC-350 uses 15 or 16 volts. So much easier. But uh, my uh, Rakal VRM-5080 that I'm using today uh, uses 24 to 29 volts. 
So not the, uh, the easiest uh, batteries to charge, of course. I use a LiPo, but uh, again, also not an easy type of battery to manage. But anyways, I just wanted to show you what, you know, what I've been doing today and uh, I'm doing all right, you know, nothing really, uh, I'll have more new stuff pretty soon, but it just happens that sometimes, you know, I just have, I don't have anything to show and, uh, you know, I don't have the financial uh, means to buy uh, all kind of stuff to test. <laughs> sometimes I receive uh, a product to a review, but it hasn't been the case lately, so... I just didn't have anything to show you guys, but uh, and that's why I'm publishing this video. I hope uh, I hope you like it. Again, nothing special, but here it is. For six meters FM, I use this uh, ladder line J pole. It's rolled up here. Takes no space at all. It's very light. You could make one for CB. Actually, I probably should test one for CB, but I know it would work. You know, really uh, without any problem. It's a great antenna, and uh, I have a video about it. Uh, check it out. CQ, 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 CQ. Ici F4 Whisky, Bravo Yankee. F4 WBY. Foxtrot 4 Whisky, Bravo Yankee. Over. Thank you very much, Rick. Uh, thank you very much uh, for information. Uh, I'm using an ICOM IC251E with 10 watts. Uh, 10 watts. Uh, the antenna is a PAR Papa Alpha Romeo uh, loop uh, with a 10 watts uh, QRP portable. QRP portable. Uh, QSL. <laughs> yes, I have zero elements, zero elements. It's a loop, a loop, uh, a horizontal loop. So uh, it's uh, uh, no gain, zero gain, uh, QSL. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, a simple loop, antenna and the QRP power, you arrive here, I, I can make a video of uh, the reception of your signal is um, a beautiful listening. Uh, there is no QRN atmospheric interferences at the moment on this frequency on my side. Uh, so, um, uh, also when the signal is not strong, um, your modulation is like at the telephone, like at the telephone. Congratulations for your QRP station, dear Fox 4WPY. Uh, it was a great pleasure to meet you and to talk uh, with you uh, in these uh, conditions. And I listen to uh, your voice again for final band. I make QRT. I go outside my home to make uh, uh, a trip with a motorcycle. Uh, Fox Road 4, Whiskey Bravo India, QRP, uh, from India, Uniform 5, November Alpha Yankee, over. Roger, roger, thank you Rick, it's uh, Whiskey Bravo Yankee, Fox Road 4, Whiskey Bravo Yankee. Uh, yes, amazing, amazing, you have a very, very good signal, up to uh, 9 plus 20, 9 plus 20 now, amazing here in the south of France. 
and uh, yeah, I have. Uh, I am also making a video for YouTube. You can check Radio Proper, Radio Proper on YouTube. I will send you the link, and uh, yeah, it's amazing. Thank you, thank you very much for your contacts. Uh, I will check it uh, on the map to uh, to check the distance. But uh, very happy about uh, you know this antenna because I have zero gain. <laughs> Not zero, but less than a dipole, less than a dipole, and uh, and it works. So. Uh, Thank you very much, have a very nice day and have a lot of fun with the uh, motorcycle and be careful. Uh, Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee, uh, back to you. Roger, roger. Your signal now, uh, signal 1, signal 1, DAP, signal 1. Uh, I'm looking, I'm just looking on YouTube uh, of the videos you make it on YouTube, uh, test in FM par Gilles uh, Fox or four, Whiskey Bravo Yank and so right and so forth. And um, uh, when I do back, uh, when I come back to my home uh, this evening, I will uh, look, I will look uh, on YouTube all your videos. So before, uh, before the dinner. Thank you very much for the nice QSO, Jill. Uh, and my best 73 congratulations for your homemade loop antenna and your QRP power. I'm using QRO, QRO power. So much, so much, too much, too much power. Hi. Okay, bye bye, Jill 73. Merci beaucoup, 73, Rick, and have, uh, have a good night. Uh, Foxtrot for whiskey, bravo, Yankee, over and out. Bye bye, au revoir. <laughs> absolutely amazing absolutely amazing I'm getting him a 9 plus 20 and he got me a 5-0 and then 5-1 so uh, of course he's got a lot of power but uh, you know it shows that uh, it doesn't really take that much to make a contact and uh, even for you know regional communications uh, it does work on a 2 meter uh, SSB I will add some thoughts here because of course I need to compare VHF with NVIS on lower bands, so 40, 60 and 80 meters, where you have a horizontal antenna, you send your signal straight up and it rains down in a regional area. So that works very, very well for uh, regional communications. But should you favor VHF or should you favor NVIS? Well, generally NVIS is going to work better. But it all depends on your geographical location. If you need to get out of a valley, probably NVIS, uh, Near Vertical Incidence Skywave, is the only thing that's going to work. If you're on flat terrain, probably NVIS is going to work better, although it depends. Now, if you have some height, like I did, VHF works really well and it's reliable. NVIS might work at some time of the day and not others, while VHF uh, might work all the time. But it, it just depends. Over water, for instance, uh, VHF works pretty well. And sometimes you can have tropospheric openings, tropospheric ducting, where you can cover extremely long distances, but it's, it's not really reliable. On HF, however, lower bands, you have a better chance. So when I say, you know, those bands are underused, it is true because we want to keep those bands. The best way to lose a band is not using it. And there are some cases where they can be extremely useful. But if you have a choice to make, I would go with HF, uh, you know, small portable radio. And I would pair that with a handheld VHF UHF radio. That's a UHF only, but a walkie talkie is much lighter than uh, say a military radio or a big you know, port you know portable but a radio like my uh, ICOM IC251 or one of the uh, you know older 2 meter or you know 70 centimeter all mode radios that you can find on eBay for instance not many are still manufactured unfortunately again because they can be extremely useful but you don't find them easily and you still have to carry a battery you still have to carry the radio which is a little bit bigger so mm, it's not the best option for uh, being on the move. Now, again, in a camp situation, yes, I would say, you know, or at home bugging in, 
definitely have one of those radios because you know who knows and one last word HF uh, NVIS also might be a little bit uh, harder to uh, pinpoint your location with VHF UHF it's a bit easier so something to consider all right guys so that's it for tonight uh, two contacts with uh, Italy uh, 280 kilometers and uh, one contact on six meters no actually no contact what am I saying I talked to Frederick on six meters uh, he has his uh, VX6 and uh, but that's wasn't really a contact was it <laughs> he was just like a few uh, you know 10 meters uh, from me so uh, and I, I had lowered my power to, to 3 milliwatts on the VRM 5080 so anyways no contact on no real contact on 6 meters and two contacts on 2 meters uh, USB no contact on 2 meter CW and that's it for tonight have a good one